All right, so I'm sitting here with boxing trainer Alan Sawil, and um, you know you've had your ups and downs in the last couple of months. Uh, Let's talk about the boxing. Firstly, you unfortunately on the last tournament didn't go so well. Um, Wilhelm Nieber and uh, Frank Rodriguez. Talk us through each of those uh, performances. Um, yeah, that, that's what happens, you know. You have your ups and downs, like you said. With respect to Frank Rodriguez, he fought his heart in the solo, but Cohen Ray was a better fighter, more skilled that day. And I was very proud of Frank because he, he didn't want to give up. And when I threw in the towel, he was upset with me in a way. You know, he wanted to continue. But I could see Cohen Ray fought an excellent fight, well-planned fight. Uh, all kudos to um, uh, Sebastian Rothman and Cohen for their good work. Frank, I still got faith in Frank. I'm not going to give up on Frank. He's, uh, he's going to work his way down to middleweight. And we'll start again. He's only 25 years old. And see from there, you know, there's no need for me to give up. I mean, I've got faith in him, you know. Still, I still want to give him another chance, work through the middleweight division, see from there. With Vilelem, the loss, I'm not perturbed at all. I'm, I'm so happy he went six rounds. It's the first time he went six rounds. Remember, with Wilhelm, he's only had four and a half minutes in the amateur ranks. Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy, you know. So to go six rounds with a number two contender, or now he's number one, Josh Pretorius, I was happy with that. I felt that maybe in that last round, had the referee not intervened, he could have put him down, but that's how the game is. So I'm satisfied, and I believe he's still got a good career. And like I said to you previously, it's a long-term thing. So he needs that experience, win, lose, or it doesn't matter. You know, as long as he's got the will to continue to learn. I mean, he's, uh, there's still a lot to learn, and it doesn't happen overnight, you know. So I'm happy with, with Vilenim. I think a lot of expectations put on him because he is a giant and he hits really hard. But he looked different in this fight. It looks like he was a bit more, let's say, relaxed and a cons uh, conservative. Uh, was that in the game plan? Well, we, we wanted to go the six rounds, you know. We wanted to go the six rounds, but I wanted him to throw more punches. So putting the two together never worked out as well as what we thought would, you know. But also remember, Josh moved around a lot this time. He, he, yes, yes, yes. And Josh's experience is that twice the amount of fights. Josh went 10 rounds with Tian Fick, the SA heavyweight champion. And he never hurt Wilhelm. He caught Wilhelm with some solid shots. He never hurt him. Even in the corner. Yeah, it just, it just, you know. But as I watched the fight again, when I watched the fight again, I felt it was much more closer than what the judges had recorded. You know, because I watched it carefully. And there were times where Willem, I saw it towards the end of the fight, started blocking better, defending better. So I'm happy with what I'm seeing at the moment, you know. And I, but like I said, it's a long-term thing, and he will progress. As long as he's got the desire to keep on training, um, he's a heavyweight, he's a powerful heavyweight. He can punch, and he can take it. We just need yeah. to hone his skills. That's it, you know. And uh, with Frank, uh, have you got any targets that you're setting in the middleweight division? I know it's a new division and there's a whole lot of new contenders out there, but have you thought about anyone in particular? I just want to uh, get him a six-rounder or an eight-rounder, a warm-up fight. I thought uh, initially maybe Wade Groth. I uh, see him he's in the rankings, you know. That would be a good match. Wade Groth beat his brother. It would be a good match between the two, you know. Six-round, eight-rounder, and then we go from there. Till he can work it up to possibly a middleweight essay title and see from there. You know? It's Frank, a tenacious boxer. He's come down from heavyweights, I believe, uh, all the way down. And now you're talking about middleweights. Uh, do you think that middleweight would be better for him? I, you know, even before this fight, even before he chose to go to super middle, I said, maybe let's try middleweight because I felt he could come down. Mm. Because he's small for a... With this fight, he weighed in at 74,6. He's really yeah, in the way. Yeah. Well, well, long before the time, you understand. So he, I believe he can make the middleweight division, you know. And... It's, only, it's a trial and error thing. We've got to try it out. You know? We've tried everything from the top to the bottom. You know? and, but one thing about Frank, he, he's got guts, he's got heart. Mm. And if a guy's got heart and guts, you can, you can try to do something extra for that guy. He deserves it. He deserves that attention. You know? And that's where I am. All right. And uh, just moving on then from, from, from Frank uh, to Akani, because he was here today, so he's at the top of my mind as well. Um, you've been struggling to get him some fights. Uh, I know that uh, Tommy recently did an interview. I was out with him at Loftus Fairsfield. He said that Akani is not wanting to fight him and they know the reason why. What did you think of that? Yes. Look, it didn't perturb me, you know, because I, was, I thought about the Tommy fight. But you know what? He's had two fights now, back-to-back -back losses with Johnny Muller. With Johnny Muller, who's, a, to me, still a good fighter an experienced campaigner, and 
Losing against Johnny Miller, you're losing against someone special. As far as I'm concerned, that's, and that is great experience for Okani. So I'm very happy with, with, with these fights against Miller. Although he never got the season, it's fine. Second one was close. Second one was close, but still not good enough, mm. you know? Um, but be that as, as it may, it's experience that he's collected now. He never hasn't taken much punishment in the, in the professional ranks. Hardly any punishment. He's 27. He's got another good eight years left in the game. So I try to get hold of the uh, Lebel Mashitua fight mm -hmm. and no response. I even mentioned a possible uh, bridge weight, uh, bridge weight, this new d uh, division that's come up with Keaton Gomes, but still no response, you know. And then I got offered the, John, the Tommy Oosthuizen fight. I thought about it, but I thought, no, not now. Tommy's experienced. He's very experienced. It's not that we're scared. We're clever. Mm. Let him have his fun. Tommy's on his own route. Good luck to him. He, he did well his last fight. Um, but I think there's other opponents there out for Akani. He's still got a long way to go. You know, it's, it's, he's learning. He's had now 13 fights. They didn't get to at least 20, 23, 24 fights to, to move to the next level. You know, that's what I'm looking at. And uh, what did you make of the, the gatekeeper comments? I mean, you would have seen that, I'm sure. <sighs> Honestly, it, it, you know, they're entitled to their, to their opinion. It doesn't perturb me at all, you know. He is a top fighter, Tommy Ostazen. We're not at that level yet. That's the reality. So I'm not prepared to... Uh, take an, another loss with a four county now against Tommy Oerstes if, if it has to happen. Not now, you know. I thought through this very carefully, you know. Let him fight the guy at his level, and then he wins, wins, then he eventually will get to Tommy uh, Tommy Oerstes. Do you feel like uh, the Masitoa fight is the right level for you? I think so. I think let him fight. That'll be a good fight for both of them, because uh, Lebo got beaten recently after he beat um, Gomes. Yeah, he lost to Levuyo Cezani. Yes, yes. A county he lost. They're both up-and-coming prospects, and if one of them loses, it doesn't matter, it's not the end. They can still build their careers. They're young men, young up-and-coming men. Boxing is not how you assess it now. Look at the guy's career. Look at him after he's the end of his career, the losses, the wins, the game, uh, draws, and then you see, ah, now he's a world champion, you know? Wow. So I, I feel that fight with Lebo Moshito is a good matchup, and I'm hoping that someone will put it on eventually, you know? All right, so that's the, the hope that I, know, I believe Lebo probably is coming back up to, to cruiserweight as well, if that's the plan. So that's a nice fight to make a return. All right, so then moving on to the next one, which is coming up now on the 31st uh, of October, which is Chipiwa Munyai. He's taking on a voluntary defense, but the guy that is at number one. Um, talk to us about that. What do you think? I think it's a mandatory defense now. Oh, is it mandatory? Yes, yes. Oh, it was voluntary. It's gone now to mandatory defense. Oh, okay. So he has to fight the number one contender. So what do you, what, what do you make of this contest? I think it's not going to be a straightforward contest. Southpaw, come forward type of fighter, strong. He hasn't got a bad record. He'll give, up, give us a good fight. But I think the experience of Chafir will outdo uh, him, Simang, at the end of the day. You know? And I'm hoping for a good fight. Chafir put up a hell of a good fight against uh, Kaya Busaka the last time. And a lot of people under thought that maybe, maybe Kaya had a good puncher's chance. And Chafir's experience took over. I'm hoping the same happens here. He's trained extremely hard. Shafir is really training hard. He's really committed to the sport. And he wants to go to that level of possible, maybe a, a shot at a world title. We're not, we're not giving up on that hope. We're still yeah. hoping, you know. So he's, hard. he's, at, great, he's at sparring, good training. Um, since he's lost three, he lost three years ago, I think, three and a half years, he's, he's been winning, winning, yes. He's been winning, winning, coming back. And now he's the SA champion defender for the second time, and I think we've got this one. But he's fighting a strong man, you so know. No way. Look what happened to Mickey Garcia on the, over the, uh, yeah. two nights ago. I mean, we don't, that's the thing. You can never underestimate anyone in this game. This is the hardest game. It's the most difficult game to predict the winner. I know you, you're the trainer, and you're kind of like on the outside of some of the publicity, but uh, talking about Chafua, he's always linked to fights against Nomeva. Comanisi, in Corsi. Um, yes. do, you, do you follow up on those stories? Always. I'm always listening to what they have to say. And they're all good matchups. But I think it would only be fair that if they do fight, they're remunerated fairly. Because even Ayanda in Corsi is a good matchup. Even Lusanda Comanisi will be a good matchup, you know? But what I think I aim now is let us get that essay title, three defenses, hold that belt, and then we can think of any of those guys, or beyond those guys, you know? 
I, I, I watched the interview with Nomeva. I've watched Komenis. He's, he's even a pro, we've even discussed it amongst ourselves. I said, in good time, you know, it will happen, but in good time. Give you, give you fear. You know, he's been in the game for a long time. He has the right to defend the SA title, to defend against the mandatory, the voluntary. Let him go through that process. We cherish the SA title. So that's where we are. All right, and um, Pangilin Yangani, his, his patience has sort of paid off because I know that you did take like a more practical approach with him, yes. but he's moving up the ranks and he's getting good fights now. Yes. We, before the Kusa fight, we waited a long time for the SA title. And um, it's all got to do with patience and perseverance. We worked our way up to number one, mm. and he was then the manager challenger, and Kusa had no choice but to defend him. And bear in mind, before the Kusa fight, Vangeli was the underdog. Yes. He wasn't supposed to win that fight. But he put up an exceptional performance. So it has benefited him. Now there's talk. I don't want to commit on the full date, but there's talk in December, early December, that he'll defend his title against the mandatory challenge of Kalia. You know, so I'm waiting. I've been having a discussion with the um, promoter, and I'm just waiting for the contract, and then we can start talking about that fight. And also with Bangili. I was offered a fight with Konko. Yeah. No way, not yet. He, Bangili needs to defend that SA title a couple of times, get that experience, and then there will be the time where he can fight Simpio Konkwe. But not now. You know, he, hasn't, he needs experience, and he's rated quite highly in the ratings. Mm -hmm. I think he's rated number 10 in the WBO. He's quite, quite high in that WBA. So the more he wins, the higher up he's going to go in the rankings. So we don't want to jeopardize that. So, yeah, so we've got to, let our game plan hopefully will work over, by the end of December, we'll still be smiling. So it's uh, being in a position of power, being the SA champion as well. It gets you guaranteed fights at the very least. Absolutely. That's why I'm, um, um, uh, we, we, same with Shafiwi before he won the SA title. We planned it so great. How we got him back into the number four position. Mvula was there, the number one. The other two couldn't fight because they had losses. Mm. And boom. To put the fight together. He was the underdog and uh, Shafiri was supposed to be finished. He wins the SA title. Now he's defending the SA, SA title. And it can lead to bigger and better things. Same with Bangile. That's why I think South African fighters should focus on one thing when they start off. Focus on that SA title. Win that SA title. Then you can talk about something beyond that, you know? That's just my feeling. The same with Jeff Magagani. Yeah, I was about to say. He's yeah. also in a position where he's... He's in the number. position, yes. Now, he was at number seven before this fight. He's gone to number four. And then I got, I got offered a fight now for him. I said, no, 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 no. He's number four. He's there. Let's get him a chance for the SA title. He's, he's been there also long enough. He's had 18 fights, five losses, 13 wins. He's there. He's ready for the SA title. So there's no keep busy fights or anything no, like that? No, we've had our one now. We've had our fight now. We're just waiting to see what happens next. What did you make of that featherweight clash? Uh, did you watch it? With who? For the SA title. Very good fight. Very close fight. I thought in the, you see, I never watched the end part of the fight, you see, but I watched up until the sixth end, I thought Ginky was ahead on points at, up until that stage, mm. you know, although it was close. And then I haven't watched the end part, so I can't comment, but what I saw it was a good fight. Two good fighters, two good prospects, you know. Well, watching it ringside, it was very action-packed, very close yeah. fights, and um, obviously Jeff would have to up his game even further uh, in a fight like that. Absolutely. This is probably his last chance to really excel in the game. Um, he's won the Harting title, he won the WBA Pan African title. Now there'll be a chance for him to really put his head on the line and um, work extra hard because Jeff has been up and down in his career, inside and outside the ring. I mean, I'm open about this, he's open about this. If he just stays focused, he can do something dramatic in that fight. You know, it's all up to him at the end of the day. Hard work consistent hard work for that fight and let's see what happens and that, that list let's actually keep on him so we can give him some air time as well jeff uh, fought becky in his last fights he looked like he was cruising in that fight though and then becky got himself disqualified what did you make of that fight look jeff should have stopped him a bit earlier jeff plays around showboats it's one thing i don't like about jeff what he does and i advise him it's you know you can advise you can talk jeff has got the talent to go right to the top he just needs to apply it in the ring. So going back to Becky's fight, um, I thought Jeff fought well. He threw some good no, combinations, no, no, no. but at the end of the day, he also started playing around. Wasted time. Why waste time? Man? Our time in this game is so limited. You know, a boxer, trainer, whatever it is, we're limited yet. 
Let's make the most of it, grab the opportunity, sort out your opponent, and let's move to the next level. You know? So I fought Jeff fought well, but I didn't enjoy the showboating. That's, you know? All right, and then another one, one of your fighters that's going towards the SA title, because I feel like you're getting a lot of SA title opportunities now as well, which is a good thing, yeah. is uh, Nimishungwa. I believe there's talks of that. I don't know if anything's concrete or set in stone, but a fight between him and Ronald Melindy. Okay. <laughs> there's been so much talk about this fight, months and months and months, and we've been waiting and waiting. Thank goodness I got to a win uh, the last tournament, the 28th of May, when Chifiwe defended his SA title. Thank goodness. It bolted him right to number one. Na is number one. Na, he's a rank outsider. I think this is one of the most outright outsiders in South African boxing this year. No one thinks he can take this guy. Ronald Malini is good. I've watched him fight 18 and 0, undefeated against Rafiwe. Many people question his uh, skill. But the thing is with Rafiwe, he's, got, he's a hard worker. He keeps on trying and keeps on trying and keeps on trying. So we're going to train to the best of our ability and come up with a plan to try and beat uh, Melindi. That's all I can say. We have a chance. People don't think we've got a chance. But maybe, maybe may surprise people, you know. Simply because Raf has got the heart, the condition, and the will to continue. You know, when he fought Malajiki, it didn't look good. It wasn't a good fight. It wasn't a, he spoiled it a bit, you know. It wasn't a good fight for both of them, you know. Then when he fought Joshua started before, he looked very good. He's an up and down guy. Then when he fought for the WBA Pan African, he didn't look good. When he fought Sabello, he looked good. So it just it's an up and it depends on him on the night of the fight. But he's also going to put his all into trying to win this SA title and see what happens. He's been calling out Ronald Melindy for a good two years now, so he's probably very motivated for this. Absolutely motivated. Although we haven't got received any contracts, you know, whatever the case, there's been talk and talk and talk. We're waiting for that, those contracts. But he's extremely motivated. And I think of that extreme motivation, he can maybe surprise a few people, you know. He's my boxer and I have faith in him, you know. And therefore, I don't care if he's fighting a guy 40 to 1. We will do the best we can to win the fight. If we don't, we don't. It's one of those things. At least deep down in my heart, I know he, we've, we've, this will be our third chance at a regional title. A third chance. Maybe he'll be th a, th a third time lucky. You know? Maybe. But I'm saying, as far as, I, as his trainer and his manager, I'll, I'll put everything into him trying to win this fight. And I'm, we're actually looking forward to it. And uh, have I forgotten anybody? Um, no, no, that's, that's it. I can't... I think it's everybody, yeah? It's everybody. And you got a couple of uh, four-round fighters, I think, as yes, well, yes, yes. Um, who are still on the upcoming scene, but yes. not in any big title contention. No, no. Trevor Ngonyami is one of them. He's undefeated. But I don't want to talk too much about him. He's still got to prove himself. Yeah. Yes, you know, still guys, they have to prove themselves in the ring, you know? So, but there's still a lot of good things happening. Let's see what happens over the next six months. You know, boxing is an up-and-down sport. It's you so... You up, down. That's you, the you, thing. You could be down and you come back that's up. That's the thing, you know. There's so many surprises in the game, you know. When you think, oh, this guy's going to do it, he doesn't do it, mm. you know. But the reality is you just keep on chipping at the block, keep on chipping at the block, and someone will, start, someone will excel. I have no problem with it when a guy loses, as long as he puts his heart and soul on the line. Mm. At least he did his best. That's, for me, the most important. And then we can work on from there. You know? That's what I'm looking at. So your goal before the end of the year is to get a couple of defences and a new SA champion? That's my goal for the end of the year. Right. Let them retain their title, get a new SA champion. Um, I doubt maybe I'll get a Kanye a fight this year. Maybe, maybe not. But next year we're going to go full out. You know? Because once a Kanye starts going, he's going to move. Any, any chance you're going to take a risky fight with Akani at this stage if, if, if action looks a bit uh, dry? Can I be honest with you? We've been offered fights from guys overseas. Guys have had 21 fights, 20 knockouts, and for a substantial sum of money. What for? Why must we take those fights? So we're not going to take any. We're not going to rush into anything. Let us wait for next year. Let's hope I can get, we can get this Lebo Mashito fight going, and then we can talk thereafter. You know? Um... Um, even even Yusuf, he beat Yusuf, who went, who just lost on point. Yeah, maybe a rematch wouldn't be a bad fight. It's no, nothing wrong with fighting guys, not, not at all. And then maybe fight Johnny again. Yeah, okay. not at all. What's wrong with that? You know, nothing wrong with that. So 
Uh, next year it's going to be full on. I doubt this year anything will come up. You know, for the, you only got a few months yeah. left. Yeah. It's, it's uh, limited tournaments. Especially. Yes, yes, that's the thing. So we've got to take with what, what we can get for now. And uh, are we going to be seeing anything from your family's promotion? Anything coming up? No, not this year. Next year? We're going to look at something next year. Yeah. Once the crowds, yeah, that's the thing. See, it's very difficult to promote, especially if you don't have the finance. When you don't have crowds. Our last tournament was a tough tournament financially for my sister, you know. Um, we, we, she, we lost on that tournament big time, you know, and because one or two sponsors pulled out. So we need the crowds to support, and she'll be back on track. All right, so thank you very much, uh, Alan Sawil, for speaking to us and giving us an update on all the boxes and what they're doing. Um, until next time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank you. Much appreciated.